Hi, how are you? Hope you all are doing well. Hope you all are fine. Okay, have you all already read the first three pages of the short story Matchbox? Who is the author of the story? Yes, Asha Purna Devi. And who are the main characters? Nomida and her husband Ajit. Okay, when we stopped the story there, what was the situation? Nomida, while she is giving the dirty clothes to the washerman, she notices an envelope which is already opened and uh, she finds it out that it's already opened and read by uh, her husband Ajit and it's a letter from her mother and uh, she is very angry and she is now picking up a quarrel with uh, Ajit and Ajit in the beginning uh, he took it in a very light manner but now he is also getting very much angry and now he is also taking the weapon against Nomida. Okay, let's read the next page of the story. Now, he too picks up the poisoned knife. He says, is that so? Those who whine day and night and hold out their palm to their son-in-law, they are the high class people. A dung picker's daughter becomes a queen and so. So, he is using the weapon against Nomida by referring to the, her poor family, her poor mother. We know that Nomida's mother always writes letter asking for money. We already read it in the previous part of the story. So here Ajit is referring to that point. You from the family where who hold out their palms to their son-in-law. You understood that point? Means asking for money from son-in-law. They are the high class people. He is asking. Oh, uh, they are the high class people. Is this the high class uh, family to ask money from their son-in-law? A dung picker's daughter becomes a queen. Another point. Dung picker's daughter. Dung picker's. Chanakam vairinna kudumba. Kudumbathile daughter. Now becomes a queen. Now she is the queen. Hmm? So this is an abuse that Ajit is making towards or about Nomida. It's a highly poisoned weapon. Here poisoned knife. Poisoned knife. Almost our tongue is the most poisoned, poisonous thing to be uh, which we which we can attack and ruin another or our enemy it's severe than any other weapon so here it's a ajis poisoned knife means his poisoned or bad tongue that is uh, that's abusing his wife nomida nomida is also not ready to keep quiet shut up nomida else the rooms on the third floor, that's a blessing. Otherwise, with that scream, everyone would have come to look. It's fortunate that their room is on the third floor. So, so nobody in the family now um, hear this, their quarrel. Shut up, Ajit roars out. What shut up? I will do what I want, what I please. What will you do? Can you do anything? Now see the, how the quarrel is moving on. Now Ajit is also roaring out. Uh, Ajit roars out. What, what shut up? Why should I shut up? And what will you do? What will you do? Can you do anything? And so he is asking. What could she do? And uh, could she do anything? Okay. I can't. I can't do anything. Almost panting, Nomida pronounces each word clearly. You want to see if I can do anything? So here Nomida is also not uh, ready to stop the quarrel. Uh, she is also replying to the in the same coin to Ajit. And she is telling uh, Ajit if wanted to see what she could do. What she could do. You want to see if I can do anything. And saying this, what happened? And uh, immediately she does something that's astonishing. 
she grabs ajis match box that's lying near the cigarettes on the table and fists she lights a match stick and touches it to her sari so what's nomida doing nomida uh, she shouts and now she picks up the match box that's lying near her cigarettes on the table and she lights the match box and touches it on her sari instantly it flares up the very fine anchor of a wealthy wife sari and if a matchbox is lit on the sari we know that it will surely the flame will run up to through the sari and uh, here the anchor of wealthy wife's sari though she is wealthy or the poor the fire does the same thing okay it burns or it flames the whole Uh, the from the end it started flaming up towards the sari the very next instant ajit have you gone mad he says and jumps to her side and grabs the burning patch and slaps it between his hands and puts out the fire now ajit grabs the burning end of the sari and just tries to uh, put the fire out by uh, by slapping it between his hands and to tell the truth now he is little afraid he looks fearfully at nomida's face sees a fire burning there bright blazing red he doesn't have so um, nomida while uh, she lights the matchstick on the sari uh, ajit ajit is with, uh, now afraid a little afraid and he sees the same fire burning on nomida's face what's the fire that what's that fire yes the fire of anger B- nomida's face is also burning red with the fire of anger and he is also uh, just her, her face is just like that and he is a bit afraid of while while he looks into the face of nomida he doesn't have the courage to put out that fire by slapping it between his hands so he tries to pour water on it um, anomida's husband ajit uh, successfully put out the fire on the sari but what about the fire on nomida's face what sort of fire is that yes it's a fire of anger uh, now could he uh, put out that fire by slapping Uh, we can put out the fire by slapping also but could the fire of anger on her face could be stopped by slapping mm, yeah, but ajit is not so courageous to slap her and stop the fire upon her uh, face it's a, a very uh, humorous way uh, asha purna devi has explained it it's very uh, nice very i i like that lines very much he doesn't have the courage to put out that fire by slapping it between his hands he doesn't has the courage to put out the fire of anger by slapping nomida so he tries to pour water if we uh, don't if you are if you don't know how to put out a fire by slapping what should we do to put out the fire yes we usually pours we usually pour water on it so he is also trying to pour water upon it means he is trying to calm down nomida in some by using some normal words now uh, we know that ajit is also angry and he is too quarreling with nomida in a very louder way and when nomida reacted in such a way now ajit now um, came to uh, know that uh, he should not do the coral words now uh, he is now speaking in in a very normal way you lose all common sense when you get angry don't you a woman and such anger oof now he is just talking in a very normal way oh you are always losing the your common sense when you are angry and then don't uh, don't you a woman and such a anger oh, uh, almost a woman and with such an anger oof oof he is uh, t- talking like that who knows what nomida would have said next but right then her niece rini steps into the room when uh, nomida we do, uh, uh, nobody knows what nomida would have said next but before that her niece 
enters the room or steps into the room immediately she says piercingly so kurima how much longer does the washerman have to wait if you don't want to give him any of your clothes at least tell him that so here uh, the niece rini is uh, talking to nomida and asking her why you want the washerman to wait um so do, do you remember that um, washerman um, washerman was there waiting for the dirty clothes to be given and it was at that time nomida uh, noticed the letter or the envelope and now uh, she almost forgot it and now rini is uh, telling her do you if you don't want to give any clothes to him just send him away or uh, tell him and uh, just send him away here kurima uh, listen to that uh, you just noticed i think you noticed that word kurima kurima means father's younger brother's wife it's uh, it's a bengali word kurima means father's younger brother's wife okay uh, so next paragraph for a second or two nomida is still perhaps recalling the washerman's face waiting for her downstairs then she picks up the dirty clothes and starts sorting them she says in a calm tone go tell him i am coming i am bringing the clothes now nomida came back to her normal stage uh, normal state and now she is telling she don't want uh, rini to know about the fight going on now inside the room so she is telling go and tell i will i am coming and in a calm tone go tell him i am coming i am bringing the clothes so she again uh, uh, she again starts sorting the dirty clothes and just speaking in a very normal way nomida speaks her mind so no one attacks her outright to her face they only pinch her with the sharp words her second sister in law is almost exhausted with work this morning and seeing her she puts a twisted smile on her sweat streaked face and says well that's something at least you finally decided to come down from upstairs baba there's no good or bad time for you you find the smallest excuse to go into your your room go into your room and get cozy with your husband does the loud talk never gets old now see nomida speaks her mind and so no one attacks her outright to her face as nomida always speaks whatever is in her mind and so nobody is ready to attack her outright or directly but they pinch her with the sharp words in the kuttu vaakkal kuttu vaakkal kondu avade imbadeyakke cherdayittu vedanipikka adana mattu veedilulla mattullavare seeram her second sister in law is almost exhausted with work with the, this morning and seeing her she puts a twisted smile on her sweat streaked face and says so, so second sister in law almost exhausted exhausted means tired with the work this morning the household work or in the kitchen and uh, other other household work she is almost tired with the uh, household works and uh, when um, she uh, seeing uh, nomida she puts a twisted smile means a fake smile or smile of what to say not the proper smile uh, just trying to mock nomida uh, smile on her sweat, sweat streaked face veerpu odinya mugham well that something at least you finally decided to come down from upstairs so oh, you now um, at least now you came down down up from upstairs from your room there's no good or bad time for you you don't have any good time or bad time you find the smallest excuse to go into your room and get cozy with your husband so again the other member is go is abusing nomida in such a way uh, tell, um, telling the thing that she is not doing any work of the house and just get relaxed in her room or in her bedroom and having loud talks with the, her husband so see what sort of insult is there at uh, nomida going on in that rich family 
and get cozy with your husband get comfort with your husband does the loud talk never gets old and asking such an a uh, dirty question also does the love talk never gets old even though if you are getting old your loud talks are never getting old it's really a prick of words at uh, nomida Nomida looks around once to get a sense of the atmosphere, sees the hurly-burly of the morning, sees the forest of people on either side. Her voice must not tremble, so she too smiles a small smile and says in an extremely soft voice, Oh, it's nothing like that. You should come and peek in some time. Our talk is all angry talk, do you know? So Nomida just uh, looks around and uh, realizes the atmosphere and sees the hurly-burly or the hurry of the house morning hurry in the morning time in every each and every house there is hurly burly means hurry running here and there getting ready to go to school or officers or anything like that see it's a forest of people on either side there's a forest of people on either on either side her voice must not tremble so uh, the she should not uh, show the real mind outside actually we know that inside her mind she is very sad and she is very angry to but she should not reveal that to other uh, to other members of the family so she is very careful that her voice should not tremble so she smiles and such a smile and with a soft smile she replies to uh, that sister-in-law oh it's nothing like that oh the matter is not about loud talk it's just you just to come and peek in our room and then you would come to know that we are just making angry talk it's not love talk major wife laughs who who and says stop it now wife don't cover up the forbidden fish with your pious spinach we haven't been raised on donkey grass. Why do we need to peek in? What you are showing us right in front of our eyes 24 hours a day. Major wife now laughs. Who, who and says, stop it. No wife. Here no wife is uh, means fourth oldest brother's wife. Fourth oldest brother's wife. Don't get confused. No need to uh, learn it by heart. Just try to understand as also um, sister-in-law. Okay. Uh, it's also Bengali word, no wife. And don't, so major wife is also there. Major wife means second oldest brother's wife. Second oldest brother's wife. So, uh, stop it, no wife. Here, here no wife is Nomida. Don't cover up the forbidden fish with your pious spinach. Spinach means jeera. Forbidden fish. Fish. Forbidden. No, no, no. Fish. Mean in a lingual mean in the nata the cover spinach which it alingi jeera which mean in a olipiti vacanda cover chayenda. Forbidden fish. Something very bad. If bad I to lena, nala the wonder cover yan stramikenda. Why do we need to peek in? That's the sentence that um, pricked this uh, major wife also. When Nomida in the beginning told, you come and peek in some time and you will notice that we are not having any loud talk but only angry talk. So here uh, she is getting angry and she is telling, no need to peek in. We, uh, you are showing us right in front of our eyes 24 hours. Your behavior itself reveals what's your nature there's no need for us to peek into your room that's the the thing major wife is telling nomida loves a laugh that can bring an attractive flush to a white face after laughing that laugh she says go on you say the naughtiest things so nomida is not ready to have a fight with that major wife and she's just laughing at her, uh, laughing it the talk away by telling that go on you say the naughtiest uh, thing so you don't be so naughty just like that she is just um uh, throwing away the fact 
the busy borrow wife runs next next one borrow wife borrow wife means eldest brother's wife eldest brother's wife is what is called borrow wife so we learnt many bengali words also kurima mejo wife no wife borrow wife don't get confused with these words no need to learn it by heart just try to keep it in your mind that's all okay so borrow wife runs up have you uh, chopped a vegetable set or are you just telling stories and suddenly she stops and starts what's that what's this unlucky thing now wife how did you burn your ankle that way so now uh, the now borrow wife now notices one thing while she is asking nomida about the vegetables to be cut and so she notices the burnt anchel of or burnt sari tip of nomida and what's unlucky thing that you have done to your sari how did you burn your anchel that way how that's um, it's burnt how how why or how nomida too starts but only for a moment the next instant she folds the anchel back quickly and says laughing oh don't remind me it's exactly what you kept warning me about i didn't listen and see what happened i used my anchel to lift a hot pot of water off the stove and that did it so she is just trying to lighten the situation by telling a lie that it just got burnt when i tried to lift a uh, hot pot of water when she tried to lift a hot pot of water her anchel or her sari uh, was burnt and uh, she is also referring to the advice she is telling that i just uh, uh, didn't uh, um, didn't hear to your advice that don't do so but i did and my sari got burnt Nomida pulls the basket of potatoes towards herself and sits down to peel potatoes and in her mind she keeps thinking about how she might be able secretly to send her mother a few rupees she can't really write to her i can't do any more don't hope for anything from me so while nomida was uh, nomida is peeling the potatoes her thoughts run Uh, her thoughts run in such a way that she is thinking how and how she uh, she could send some money to her mother in the beginning what uh, she decided not to send any money or she decided to ask her mother not to write any more letters and i won't be doing anything etc etc but now see how her mind changes she is now thinking the uh, thinking out a way to send some money to her poor um, mother and because she knows the fact that her mother um, ha- mother has only nomida as the only relation and everybody in the village knows that nomida is married to a, a rich family and her husband is a, is a high minded and large hearted man so the everyone will um, um, know the know the story and uh, uh, her mother or always need some money and everyone will uh, what to say complain this uh, about that why nomida is not sending the money though she is married to a rich family so it will be a great insult for her if she is not sending money to her mother so she is thinking how uh, she could send some rupees to her mother this this is precisely why i compare women to match boxes even when they have the materials within themselves to set off many raging fires they never flare up and burn away the mask of men's high mindedness the large heartedness they don't burn away their own colorful shells so here our asha puna devi is concluding her short story by telling that this that's why i compared um, i compare women to match boxes because even though they have the enough materials or enough gunpowder in it to burn everything it won't it won't or just like that a woman also even though she is very powerful to have to um, powerful enough to burn everything inside the house or burn everything or everybody but she won't 
that's the thing and men knew that and that's why they are using her carelessly they never flare up or burn away the mask of men's high mind they never uh, burn away the fake face of um, men they don't burn away their own colorful shells they won't burn the colorful shells colorful shells the match box won't burn its colorful shell it's remaining very uh, safe in the uh, any any corner of the house they won't burn them the men knew this too they won't burn men knew this too men knew the fact that even though woman is very powerful or his wife or daughter or whoever it is is very powerful they won't burn and harm anybody in other other anybody in the house anyone in the house that's why they leave them scattered so carelessly in the kitchen in the pantry in the bedroom here there anywhere so that's why the match boxes left carelessly everywhere in the house either in the kitchen or in the pantry or here and there very carelessly even though we know that it's very powerful to burn the whole house and uh, it won't because it won't burn by itself and same similarly woman also even though she is very powerful she won't do any harm to her family okay quiet without fear they put them in their pockets also we carelessly put the uh, match box inside our pockets also knowing the fact that it's highly explosive but it won't burn and we are thinking that it won't burn but what happens when it a, a matchstick is struck on the side of the match box we know how dangerous it will be but it won't be doing that mm? so this um, very nice short story and it's translated from bengali by prasenjit gupta i hope you understood so uh, don't be uh, the in the beginning of the story asha purna devi story we have we read an introduction to it so don't be the cantil don't be the match box too it's my advice so always be a mirror that reflects the light and so give light to your family and others um, to the whole world but never be a cantil means never destroy yourself for giving the light to others okay and uh, this uh, this is a very wonderful story and uh, uh, she nomida is truly a representative of indian women not only indian women women truly a representative of a wife is that so okay now uh, have you noticed the last line of the poem by katherine tynan what's the what's that any woman she is just making a prayer to jesus christ asking her, uh, telling that uh, don't take me away un until my children are grown up very i uh, the beautiful line Mm. and in the same way have you heard uh, have you ever read the poem the night of the scorpion there also uh, we could uh, see a typical mom mother who is uh, now thanking god in the last line she is thanking god for sparing her children and uh, having bitten uh, the uh, the scorpion uh, she is telling that the scorpion bit her and spared the children so she is thanking for that though she spent the whole night in the um, in the pain and uh, everything pain of the uh, bitten scor uh, scorpion bitten and but uh, her skin is already burned with the paraffin if you are reading that uh, poem it's very nice poem to be read and just uh, try to collect it and read it but she is thanking uh, god that scorpion spared her children and bit her so it's a fine uh, poem also it's also uh, the the mother is also the representative of a village a woman and this is also a nice story and just read it and try to comprehend and we will go through the activities in our next class okay thank you very much stay safe stay at home thanks for watching keep watching thank you